This video is intended to supplement the written DaVinci installation instructions which should be used as your primary source of information. Nothing in this video supersedes any health or safety instructions provided by your employer or OSHA. DaVinci is not responsible for the viewer's failure to follow the written DaVinci installation instructions or any other instructions provided by the installer's employer or OSHA. First, the roof deck must be a minimum 15 32 inch APA plywood or 7 16 inch OSB. It is critical that the roof deck is clean of debris and that the surface is flat. Any decking flaws will affect the final appearance of the roof. An eaves flashing or drip edge made from copper, coated steel, or aluminum should be installed on the bottom perimeter of the roof. In areas where ice damming is possible, Self-adhered membrane that complies with ASTM D1970 should be installed on the bottom, or eave, of the roof and extend at least two feet above the plate line. Self-adhered membrane should also be installed in all valleys, regardless of climate. Additionally, if the roof pitch is between 3 and 12 and 4 and 12, self-adhered membrane is required over the entire roof. Once the self-adhered membrane is installed, an additional underlayment should be installed, starting at the eaves and working to the top. On roof pitches of at least 4 and 12, but less than 6 and 12, 30 pound felt interlay should be used. The felt should be applied over the top portion of the shakes and extend onto the plywood sheathing so that the bottom edge of the felt is positioned at a distance above the butt equal to twice the weather exposure. So, for a 10 inch exposure, start the next layer of felt 20 inches above the butt line of the course below. Once the underlayments have been installed, flashing should be installed on all gable ends. We recommend overhanging drip edge. Da Vinci starter tiles should be installed once the underlayment and flashings have been put in place. Install with the Da Vinci logo on top. The starter tile should overhang the drip edge approximately one inch. Space the starter tiles three eighths of an inch apart as tiles will expand when worn. Each starter tile should be nailed with two nails on a line approximately six inches from the butt. Now that the starter tiles are in place, it is time to install the field tiles. The tiles may be installed in straight or staggered coursing. Each tile must be installed with two corrosion-resistant roofing nails. Stainless steel, copper, or hot-dipped galvanized nails are recommended. Nails may be hand-nailed or driven with a coil gun. Special care should be used to ensure that the nails are driven flush with the top of the tile. Overdriving the nails or driving the nails on an angle will prevent the slates or shakes from laying flat and the tiles on top will lift. Starting at the bottom left for a right-handed roofer, any tile width may be chosen for the first tile except the 12 inch slate. The reason that the 12 inch slate may not be used is that the starter tile is also 12 inches. The tile is installed directly on top of the starter tile with the butt of the slate or shake and the butt of the starter tile flush with one another. After the first tile is installed, the next tile installed may be any width as long as the offset between the gaps is one and one half inches or more. The same rule applies to all subsequent courses of tile. The gaps between tiles may never be aligned with those of adjacent courses. The installation can proceed with either a straight or staggered course installation. Slate and shake are installed at different exposures as the tiles are different lengths. If a staggered application is required, the slates must be laid at a 7 inch exposure if the roof pitch is 6 and 12 or greater or at a 6 inch exposure if the roof pitch is less than 6 and 12. If the 7 inch exposure is used, the horizontal chalk lines should be snapped 7 inches above the tips of the first course of slate. All subsequent lines are chalked at 7 inch intervals. For staggered coursing, every other slate has its tip laid on the chalk line, while the alternate slate tips are placed approximately 1 inch below the line. Once the chalk lines are in place, 
The insulation continues by placing the tips of the slates on the chalk line and choosing the proper width of slate. Ensure that there is a minimum one and one half inches between the joints of slates on adjacent courses. The slates should be laid as they come out of the bundle. Not every slate will fit, so you may have to take a second or third slate from the top to ensure proper side lap. A rack type system, also known as rack style, stair stepping, or pyramiding, should be used. This will prevent same size slate from being laid directly on top of one another. Whether installing straight or staggered coursing, the installation of the field tiles will continue until you reach a gable, valley, hip, or abutment. When a gable is reached, it is preferred that you do not cut any tiles. Approximately 16 to 24 inches from the gable end, measure the remaining distance to the edge of the roof. Then pick two tiles that will fit that distance with adequate side-to-side -side spacing. The spacing may be adjusted between 1 half to 3 sixteenths of an inch to make the tiles fit properly. For a straight course installation, the slates may be laid at a 7 and 1 half inch exposure if the roof pitch is 6 and 12 or greater. For a 7 and 1 half inch exposure, lay the first course of slates with their butts laid flush with the bottom edge of the starter. Each subsequent course of slates is laid opposing the slate 7 1 half inches to the weather. This is achieved by aligning the 7 1 half inch mark on each slate with the tip of the slate below it. An alternate alignment method is using horizontal chalk lines to align the slates. For this method, snap a chalk line 7 and 1 half inches above the tips of the first course of slates. A chalk line can then be added every 7 and a half inches all the way to the ridge line if desired. For a straight course installation, the shakes may be laid at a 10 inch exposure if the roof pitch is 6 and 12 or greater. For a 10 inch exposure, Lay the first course of shakes with their butts laid flush with the bottom edge of the starter. Each subsequent course of shakes is laid exposing the shake 10 inches to the weather. This is achieved by aligning the 10 inch mark on each shake with the tip of the shake below it. If a staggered application is required, the shakes must be laid at a 9 inch exposure. When the 9 inch exposure is used, the horizontal chalk line should be laid 9 inches above the tips of the first course of shake. All subsequent lines are chalked at 9 inch intervals. For staggered coursing, every other shake has their tip laid on the chalk line while the alternate shake tips are placed approximately 1 inch below the line. The installation continues by placing the tips of the shakes on the chalk line and choosing the proper width of shake that will ensure there is a minimum 1 and 1 half inch side lap between the joints of the shakes on adjacent courses. The shake should be laid as they come out of the bundle. Not every shake will fit, so you may have to take a second or third shake from the top to ensure a proper side lap. A rack type system, also known as rack style, stair stepping, or pyramiding should be used. This will prevent same size shakes from being laid directly on top of one another. When a gable is reached, it is preferred that the installer doesn't cut any tiles. Approximately 14 to 18 inches from the gable end, Measure the remaining distance to the edge of the roof. Then pick two shakes that will fit that distance with adequate side-to-side -side spacing. The spacing may be adjusted between 1 half and 3 sixteenths of an inch to make the shakes fit properly. Valley metal should be W valley with a standing seam down the middle or a double W with a break in the middle and standing seams on either side. The decision on which valley metal should be used will be based on whether a closed or open valley is preferred. Da Vinci slate and shakes have an open rib structure, and the standing seam in the different valley types will mask this rib structure. For an open valley, the double W is used where the cut tile are abutted to the diverter on each side of the valley. If a closed valley is chosen, the tiles are butted to the diverter in the middle of the valley. When a valley is reached, tiles should be cut to the correct angle to allow for an open or closed valley. These tiles are best cut with a circular saw, although a box knife may be used if necessary. When installing slate, it is preferable to use the widest slates available for the slate closest to the center of the valley. Larger slates will allow the installer to keep nails out of the center of the valley, and in addition, it will only require one valley slate per course. A combination of the 12-inch and 10-inch tiles is ideal. 
When installing shakes in the valley, depending on pitch, two shakes may need to be cut to finish the course. This can create buildup of shakes. To remedy this issue, Da Vinci has designed a 12-inch valley shake. Due to the width of the shake, it is not necessary to cut two shakes to finish the course. Once all field slates have been installed, a minimum 6-inch wide piece of non-corrosive metal should be placed over the hips and ridges. The metal should extend at least 3 inches from the center point on each side of the hip or ridge. When installing a hip, Da Vinci recommends you use the Boston hip application, which will hide the rib structure so it is not visible from the ground. Use the portion of slate that was cut off for the valley. Lay the pieces on the bottom course as shown, pressing the two slates together tightly. The second set of slates should be installed uncut with the outside edges pulled all the way down to the eave of the roof. The installation can proceed to the ridge at a 6 inch exposure. A similar application is used for the ridge. The prepackaged hip and ridge should be installed one piece at a time so that the butts of two tiles are adjacent and the inside edges touch. These should be installed with a 6 inch exposure as well. When installing the hip and ridge, there are two options with Da Vinci Shake, either a two-piece or one-piece application. The one-piece application works best on pitches of 12 and 12 or less. Steeper pitches may cause the outside edge to lift, so it is recommended the conventional two-piece hip and ridge method be used for pitches greater than 12 and 12. For the one-piece application, a pair of six-inch shakes should be used as a starter course underneath the first piece of hip and ridge. These 6-inch tiles should be cut so that they are approximately 5-inch widths, and they should also be cut in length so that they don't extend beyond the top of the second course of field tiles. If preferred, on the bottom of a hip, the two 6-inch Da Vinci shakes may be placed upside down so that the rib structure on the underside is not visible. One-piece hip and ridge should be installed at a 10-inch exposure. A similar application is used for the ridge. Snow guards should be considered in all geographic areas where accumulating snowfall is possible. Most kinds of brass, copper, or clad aluminum snow guard systems work well with Da Vinci roofs. It is recommended that snow guards be installed during the installation of the Da Vinci roof. Retrofit snow guards are available. Details regarding installation remain the responsibility of the installer and the customer.